Hello, everybody, and welcome to another Community Fortress. This one was sent in by Farkin, and this is the Fortress of Clobbersmiths. If you would like to send in a fortress for me to have a peek at on this show, you can do that via my Discord server. Link is in the description of this video. Simply scroll down to the Discord server, join the Discord, and then go to the room that says DF Save Sharing. Follow the kind of template that other people have been doing by uploading your save file to a file sharing service of your choice or directly to the Discord in a zip folder, and add a couple of screenshots optimally and a brief description of your fortress, and just let me know that it's okay to use in a video. This particular fortress is of the site government, the Deep Picks, and the Gloved Gate. And their brief description, they cover that they wanted to try and organically uh, make steel gear for their uh, military uh, as part of uh, their only defense. However, uh, they weren't able to find flux, so they kind of had to work around that. Um, they also said that this is one of their first attempts at trying to really uh, explore organic building instead of, like, you know, building very grid-like fortresses, trying to make things a little bit more natural in the layouts, um, which is something I'm a big fan of, so I'm really curious to have a look at this one. Uh, so it is on a volcano over here, this uh, big old lava tube right there. And uh, at the front door, you can see some remnants of recent f fighting. I can see some uh, some dwarven blood. Uh, in fact, if, if we actually look at uh, civilizations around here, you can see that we are at war uh, with this goblin civ, as uh, well as a r unnamed ratman civilization. And uh, it's always just kind of fun to see. But uh, the main entryway here is made out of obsidian. It looks quite nice. It definitely is very much still under construction, large portions of this fort, so I should kind of preface this. Um, and then something uh, that, that they also mentioned is that uh, they definitely need a better way of getting rid of boulders. So I'm going to talk a little bit about getting rid of boulders potentially in this video as well. Um, usually what I do when I'm building an area like this is, okay, I'll dig out all this stuff. Uh, what, and then I would go down to about here and I would plop down two, maybe three uh, masonry shops and just get them making blocks. Because they are much, much easier to not dispose of, that's the wrong word, but um, distri redistribute around the floor, uh, around the fortress and like put it on the floor and whatnot. Another thing is, by default, uh, obsidian is not allowed to be used. So if I actually go to the stone use uh, option here and we uh, kind of scroll through here until we find obsidian, which is uh, underneath here somewhere. Uh, just let me just scroll and take a peek, peek, peek. Take a look, take a look, take a look. Where is obsidian? I know it's on, I know it's on this list. Uh, I'm just uh, living up to my username right now and unable to see it. But uh, there it is. So by default, obsidian is not allowed to be used. So if you just allow it to be used, um, then you can just make it into bricks. You can make it into blocks. You can make it into floor. You can make it into walls. Do whatever you want to do. Make it into your workshops or start making them into swords. Um, and then there's these handy dandy little ramps here for what appears to be either a, a temporary previous fortress or stuff that is entirely still under construction. But then this ramp just kind of goes down over here and uh you can see the, the very bottom of that hill it's quite it's quite the mountain i, I gotta say it's it's a nice embark here you got um we, we kind of go down, we can see uh, where it begins to kind of spin, and uh, you can see that there is they've been mining out cinnabar and uh, various other materials over here because this right here, just a few levels up, is a very, very, very large, or maybe not very large, but a rather decently sized uh, area where lots of different materials have been mined out of varying types. Um, also, I personally, I would make this into either, like, this is where the combat would happen against sieges and I'd fill this all up with traps, or I would, like, just pave the whole thing and just make it into some sort of tomb complex or something. Really cool layout you got there. I would definitely do something with that if possible. As we scroll down, there's, there's more spaces like this as well as uh, this minecart route. Which I'm not sure if it if they're just doubling it up or if it's already functioning, but uh, essentially it just runs stones down to the fortress itself all the way down here. Uh, but we we are going to um, follow this back. Um, so another thing about stones is. Uh, <clears throat> Once they've been dumped out of minecarts, uh, if you just put a one tile uh, size uh, stockpile for them to be dumped into, it'll definitely like lower down the amount of boulders that you're going to have. But generally what I do, like like I said earlier, is it just for general storage, whenever I've dug out a new area or started building a new area, I will put down either a couple craft store shops or masonry shops, or sometimes both, and try and do my best to, uh, you know, just remove boulders that way. That, or alternatively, just using the boulders to build floors right where they were is also an easy way. If you have a lot of the same type of stone in one spot, we're going to be going up uh, to view this area in a second. And the ramp finally enters the fortress. Of course, there's some more blood down here, uh, as is the way of things with dwarven forts. And then we have this lovely open area. Now, uh, this whole thing could use some paving, in my opinion. I, I think like either like an obsidian or a granite floor for this whole zone would look awesome. We have um, our metalsmiths industry powered by lava. 
coming from uh, the, the volcano, which uh, came in from this spot right here. Like this is one neat ass setup, actually. I, I really like kind of the, um, the the flow in here for the lava combined with like this almost lava aqueduct. Like this is a really neat effect. Um, once again, like all, all it really needs is just like pave these floors, put down bricks and pave these floors. Do do some neat patterns, engrave those paved floors, knock out the bottom pieces of the pillars and put in cooler materials there and like show off your fortress's wealth a little bit. Like down here, you've got um, these two like, you know, infinite stockpiles, right? But and then you're redistributing it into other stockpiles. It's like you've got the, this bar block bin, but it's not even half full. There's tons of boulders here that could be redistributed into other places in the fortress. Same goes for like stairs. Like if you look at the edges of the stairs, right? They've got like that little uh, kind of grit kind of color base to it. If you just take stairs and you just go, mm -hmm, whoop, all the way over top of it and then say, let's make it out of cobaltite instead. Uh, then I unpause it. These will actually fill up with black stairs instead. And instead of having like that ugly little gap around the edge, it'll fill it in. And then you can kind of go around the top and just do this kind of thing and just say, all right, let's let's all, let's also use that, that, that the cobaltite. And we can make this into a very dark colored area and it would have a completely different aesthetic. And you could really like kind of theme your rooms like that. I, I noticed that like you, you've done a little bit of this right here um, with using the, the, the rough granite floors, but like <clears throat> you could do so much more of this and really that that is kind of my advice on how to deal with all of the uh different floor pieces then we do have some furniture this this whole stockpile could be filled up too um and then if i hit Z, we can see that we whoops we, we do have uh some some offices and uh a, a bigger office for um a captain of the guard as well as their prison set up over here trading right there and uh a barracks assigned to some guards and then a really really nice big hospital once again all of these floors can be paved would deal with a lot of these boulders really easily um and then some very large spaces for the very important dwarf silver tongue the king um good name by the way and then down here we have kind of a side area once again with that uh, barracks and then we can go down a layer which is going to take us down to this kind of lower space that looks like it's going to be bedrooms or something but uh, we also kind of want to go up a little bit because um, the fortress kind of continues up. Now over here we have a very large dining hall and a very nice tavern and stuff. Uh, we have other offices and taverns kind of scattered around. I really like this layout with kind of like the little hallways in between. It reminds me of the, um, the vanilla... Um, uh, fortresses that the, the game generates for factions that are already alive. <clears throat> they have kind of like this square open aesthetic that's kind of chaotic. And I, I, I this kind of reminds me of that in a way. If you want to see what that looks like, just kind of go look at my, uh, my my Let's Play for um my, the Fortress of Brave book because it's a reclaimed uh, generated fortress. A small one, but still a reclaimed generated fortress. Um, there's a, a bunch of guild halls over here as well as a very large meeting area. And uh, if we move up another layer, we can see over here uh, there's a, a, you know, a, a bunch of bodies uh, from remaining hidden fun. Uh, it seems like the, the invaders kind of came in down through this ramp and then just got cut into a lot of pieces. Uh, we got two spots here with these windows. Another thing that you can do with windows is you can put fortifications in front of them. And uh, in my opinion, they look just as nice. Um, you can place fortifications, and then you don't have to worry about idiotic dwarves uh, crashing through them. And it still gives the same aesthetic and also uses up more of those boulders. Um, over here, we got a bunch of querns uh, surrounded by a whole ton of breweries and uh, massive food stockpiles. These dwarves are very, very happy with that supply, I'm sure. And then we can move up another layer, and we can see more bedrooms and offices and uh, more storage over here, as well as... Um, uh, the layer above, there's bigger, fancier bedrooms, I'm assuming, for more important dwarves. Or maybe they all have bedrooms like this. But it just kind of keeps going up. Over here is a very large library uh, over top of a lower floor. I'm assuming this is supposed to be a double floor library, essentially. Uh, eventually. Uh, that, that's the word I was looking for. And uh, I once again, I really like these big hallways. They, they look very nice. Uh, what I would do is I would knock out these inner walls, though, and replace them with constructed walls, because I think they have a nicer look to them. Same with these windows up here. Once again, I would do the same thing with fortifications so the dwarves could still see through, but less likely that somebody would fall through it. Uh, I would also pave all these hallways. I would leave the bedrooms as is. I think they look very nice, but I would pave all the hallways with different colors for each floor, try and make things stand out a little bit. Uh, some unassigned bedrooms also as well. And uh, then from there we can go down. So we're gonna move down and then the stairs just kind of go down, down, down until we get to this kind of lower area here where we have our clothing industry. Um, we have uh, a, a whole bunch of farmer's workshops over here. I'm assuming making plant cloth. Yep, processing plants. And then we got looms that are then moving stuff over to there. And uh, down here we have uh, wood furnace industry and ashery industry. Uh, layer above, there's unfinished space, which again could all be paved. Um, and then more clothing industry. And then as we move down, we move down. Uh, we eventually get down to here where we have a well that is uh, very, very covered in uh, various uh, blood and things where dwarves are cleaning themselves because, goddamn, they need to. Uh, and then down here we get to uh, 
Very small, interesting little bridge setup. I, I'm assuming this is just for cleaning dwarves. It does appear to be that, uh, because if it's three of three, um, or three of three, they can uh, walk through it, and it is a very efficient way of just forcing them to clean themselves. Like, look, there's everything from apple cider uh, to troll blood in here, and dwarven pus. It's a, it's a pretty good soup, that. Um, and then down here is the kind of lowest area that this map goes to, uh, where there's a bunch of livestock, and then there's uh, this uh, lovely lava tube that just continues to go down, and that is the entirety of Clobbersmiths. Overall, I think this is a very good foundation for what will probably be a really awesome fortress in the future. And I, I just wanted to say, like, it's really nice to see people building more organic fortresses because uh, with a little bit of work, this could be an absolutely glorious showpiece of Dwarven engineering. Uh, it just it just needs a little bit of fit and finish. Spit and finish, I think is the term I'm looking for here. If you'd like to see more videos like this, check out this YouTube channel. There's a growing playlist of them. And if you, once again, would like to send in a fortress, simply join my Discord server and go ask some questions in the DF save sharing room if you need help uploading your save. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one. If you want to support this channel directly, buy some merchandise. Links in the description.